In this session, we're going to take a look at masking in Corel PhotoPaint. And really what I want to do is I just want to open this up for those of you that are new to Corel Draw, and then some of you who haven't used PhotoPaint. You'll see that in some of the tutorials, I use masking in PhotoPaint to clean up perhaps JPEGs that have been compressed and destroyed. Now, as I said in that session, that you can't recover everything. If you get a really bad image, it's just not going to work. Simple Steps Raster is doing its job. It's pulling all the colors, but the colors are all over the place. But if you want to be able to work with colors and pixels in photo paint, you have to understand masking. And I just want to give you a foundation for that in this session. I've created an RGB graphic here with some different objects and grayscales and things on it. I'm going to go ahead and open that in photo paint. So we'll go ahead and go to edit bitmap and we'll bring this into photo paint and we'll take a look at masking. The first thing relating to masking, I want to explain or define what a mask is. So I'm going to create a simple rectangle mask right here in the middle of the red to white scale bar there. Now this area is my mask. The area outside where you see color is not my mask. Anything that I do in photo paint inside of this mask, including effects, will be applied to only the pixels that are in the mask, not the pixels that are outside the mask. Now, my mask looks a little bit different than perhaps yours. That's because my mask has been set up as a mask overlay. Here is a mask marquee. I prefer the mask overlay because I get a visual tint of the representation of the mask. You can change that here by going to mask and selecting mask overlay. You can also change the color of the area that's not in your mask or your tint by going to tools, options, and right down here under display is your mask tint. And I could change this to let's say a red and select OK and that'll change the color of that. Now if you're working over a red it's very difficult to see the mask so you might want to change the color of the mask. I'll go back to tools, options under display and I'll change this back to say a magenta and I'll select OK. Now, as I said, only the area that's in the mask will be applied or have the adjustments applied to it or anything that you do in photo paint. For example, here I've got a paintbrush. I left click and I start painting and you notice that it was only applied to the mask. I'll hit Control Z. I want to hit Control Z, not Control X. Also, you'll notice if you do an effect, let's go to adjust tone curve. And that's only going to be applied to the area in my mask. As you can see there, we just turned all of that red. Now that's going to be a solid red. Go ahead and hit cancel. So that is what a mask is and some of the things we need to be aware of when we're working with them. Now we have a number of different tools available for masking. I'm going to come up here and go to mask. And I'm going to go to remove. Let's take a look at the color mask. I use this sometimes, but let's go ahead and go to mask, color mask. Let's go ahead and select reset. And then let's take the eyedropper tool here, which is sampled colors, and we'll click on the yellow. Then I'll click here for a preview on the little eye. And I can see that all I got was my yellows. And I can start to apply effects to those using color mask. Now I could also turn this off, come down here, and let's say you want to get yellow and red at the same time. Get my eyedropper, select that, click on preview. Now I've masked the yellow and the red. Now there's some tolerance set up here. The tolerance settings in the mask and Corel are pretty weak, but we'll come down here and just bring this up to let's say 47 and we'll change our smoothness here a bit and then we'll go ahead and preview and you can see how that affects that. But I usually use it only when I'm selecting solid colors. I'm going to go ahead and select cancel here. Over here beneath the pick tool we have our different masking tools. We have a rectangle mask, an elliptical mask, a freehand mask, a lasso mask, magnetic mask, magic wand tool, and brush mask. You'll also want to be aware that up here underneath the pick tool we have the mask transform tool. Let's take a look at that. I'll create a rectangle mask and there's my mask. Now I'll come up to the pick tool and I'll grab my mask transform tool. 
Here I can actually work with this sort of like a vector object and draw. Left click, hold down, drag. I can change my scale. I can come here and I can rotate it. I can come over here and I can, that's my scale. Here's my skew. And I can skew this, etc. Let's go back to mask and remove. One of the key settings we'll want to be aware of when we're dealing with masking tools, especially the magic wand tool and some of the other tools, is anti-aliasing and tolerance. Let's take a look at that. We'll start with the magic wand tool. Here's my magic wand tool. Now, right now I've got my anti-aliasing turned off. And I've got my tolerance set to 30. If I come here and click on this grayscale, I've got 90, 80, 70, 60, 50, 40 going on down. If I click on here with a tolerance of 30, you'll see that, that it selects in the mask the 100% black, the 90, the 80, and the 70. That means that my tolerance set at 30 is going up to 30% of that color. And it will work the same with any color that I clicked on. Now, if I have anti-aliasing turned on, and we'll take a look at that over here. If I don't have anti-aliasing turned on, I'll get a hard edge on my mask, which is what I want to be dealing with when I'm trying to convert things to solid edges so I get a nice vector-looking output when I print. But if I have my anti-aliasing turned on and I click, you'll see that I get some pixelation here in the mask. And that means that if I do anything with this, I'm going to get a soft edge instead of a hard edge here. And let's say I've got some text and I'm converting it to black for output for color separation from a raster image. I'm going to mask it out and do some things to it. I want to have that anti-aliasing turned off. Let's go back to tolerance for just a minute. I'll hit Control-Z and remove that. Let's take our tolerance up to 100%. Now, it looks like I didn't create a mask, but because I was set at 100%, there is a mask here. I just selected everything, every pixel in the actual image. Let's take our mask down to, say, 92% and we'll come up here. Or not our tolerance, not our mask. Click on Remove Mask. Oops, I hit Color Mask. There. I want to come down here to Remove Mask. Go ahead and click at the 92% and you can see it went down to 92% of the color ranges and grabbed all of these because they were considered to be at that. They just went right over them and then we've got this selected here. So we can see working with mass that we're going to have to deal with tolerance and understand what that is and what our different tools are. Now down here we've got our ellipse mask which you can create a circle with etc. We've also got a freehand mask that you can just left click hold down and just kind of draw a mask. Control Z, no, not Control X, Control Z. Take a look at the next one. We've got our lasso mask. Now you'll notice that if I lasso around this green object here, I've got a tolerance again with this tool. I'm outside of it, but when I double click, it's going to lasso in and grab whatever's closest based on the tolerance. And that's our lasso mask. We'll hit Control Z. Come down here. Here is our magnetic wand mask. And we click here and you'll see that the magnetic wand is moving the pixels kind of along the edge or finding the best place to select based on tolerance also. I want to zoom in and do that. Let's go over here. Let's just double click for now and hit Control Z and zoom in. Usually I will zoom in when I'm using this, but I've got a tolerance set at 90. We can bring that down. We'll click here on the white and just kind of follow along and you'll see what's happening is, is that's just laying down the line for my mask, following that line, whatever it's closest to. Even though I'm out here, you can see it's still laying it down down there and you can kind of see the wire going with it. And there you go. And you see that would be magnetic masking. I don't use it very often, but it is there if I need it. Go ahead and double click here and I'll hit Control Z. Beneath that, we have our magic wand tool. Once again, tolerance based. Click here, 92. It's going to go all around the edges here, but it's not going to select these areas here, as you can see. And then beneath that, we have our brush mask. Powerful tool. I use it quite frequently, but you can left click 
and actually kind of brush or draw out masks and you can use different brushes here I've got the square brush and you can see how that works or I can hold that down etc I'll hit control Z here one of the things that we want to be aware of when we're masking is that I'm going to go to mask remove we have very powerful tools here in the mask outline I'm going to go ahead with the magic wand tool and just select this green here now let's zoom in and we'll take a look at some things I can go here to mask I can go to mask outline and I can reduce my mask and it'll come back into my color if I bring this up to say 42 pixels see that it comes in it reduces it and if I have this eye and I click this I'll get a preview or won't get a preview I'm gonna hit cancel I can also go to mask mask outline expand and once again you can see as I click the preview that our mask is expanding right there now I can also go to mask mask outline and feather and I can give that a soft edge and I can set up different settings here here's going to the outside I can go to the inside with that mask as you can see right there kind of give this a soft edge if I wanted to let's take a look at that I'll select OK and then I'll go to mask and we'll take a look at invert here now if I hit the delete key with a masking tool selected if I hit the delete key with a pick tool selected I'll delete my object can't do that on a background but if this was an object and I hit delete it would delete my object as opposed to the background color I'm going to go ahead and go back to the masking tool here selected then hit the delete key and you can see what happened mask remove and we softened up those edges so you can do some very powerful things with masking in photo paint I use it all the time I want to go back here let's take a look at mask mask outline and let's look at remove holes we can see we've got some holes here in our mask some circles that we made remove holes and those are removed and all you have is the mask around the outside so you can see when you start working with this masking you can do a lot of things to manipulate uh, pixels similar to doing trim and weld and all that with the vector but you're using a mask to do it with pixels in an image hit control Z and let's go to mask mask outline and take a look at smoothing but I want to look at smoothing from a different standpoint and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take and create a very jaggy mask with the freehand tool so we can understand what smoothing is and I use smoothing frequently when I've got an object that's kind of pixelated and I want to get it to a nice smooth edge so it might look like vector a lot of times I'll use my smooth to do that but you got to be careful when you do that I'm going to create kind of like a starburst freehand shape here. Just a small mass so we can see what smoothing is. And we'll go ahead and zoom in. I'm going to go to mask, mask outline, and select smooth. Now we can see that we're smoothing out our mask here, but if I bring this radius up real high, you can see what it'll do. Got it up to 37 it smooth that out all the way around go ahead and select cancel so we'll go ahead and wrap here this is just some fundamentals on masking to get you started and you can do some experimentation with this and before you know it you'll be very comfortable working with masking because now you understand what masking is and some of the things that you need to know about it go ahead and wrap in this session and we'll continue in our next session